that sort of thing. Um, again, common questionnaires can be useful for your triangulation of that pain experience, figuring out where exactly these are. Um, generally speaking, they don't need to be administered current launch to everybody. Although I will say, like I said, the PCS is one that I actually do include just routinely. Again, I've gotten in the habit of doing that. You may or may not decide to do that. One thing I do encourage you to do, as I've said already, is look at the individual items. If you start to hear patients making comments that remind you of the items on that scale, you may decide, you know what, I wouldn't mind quantifying this a little bit, just so I've got a record of it. Then we can sort of see how things change over time. I think they've got their most value for prognosis or theranosis. Um, and I think as we've discussed, emotional screening questionnaires can be used by non mental health practitioners, but then oh, there's all my caveats here. Be familiar with the scale, including the proper administration, scoring, and interpretation. Know why you're administering it. Be prepared to deal with the results. And if you don't feel completely comfortable, don't use it. Refer to somebody who is. I don't want to get an email saying the college is investigating an review for inappropriate application of the use of these scales. All right, let's see what the uh, online community has had to say about this discussion. Why screen for mental health issues? What is the risk to patient in medical legal states? Ah, interesting. So I think she's she's not asking the question why. She's sort of saying, in response to your question, what is the risk to uh, medical legal states? So this is an interesting question, right? What are the implications for the patient if you state They score a super threshold on your depression screen, or they score higher than, I don't know, 30 on a pain catastrophizing scale. This is one of those things that I, I believe you, you need to do carefully, but again, I don't think you need to be afraid of it. If you address these things as objectively as possible, where you say, you know, I administered this tool, this pain catastrophizing scale. This patient scored 35 out of 52. Based on the published evidence, this would suggest a high level of pain-related catastrophizing. Why is this important? Well, because Walton et al. has shown that high levels of pain catastrophizing is a risk factor for developing chronic problems. That's probably about as objective as you can get to it. And then somewhere down, if you were, let's say, we're writing this back to a hunter or a third party payer or whatever, somewhere further down, you should have a treatment plan section. Here's how I'm going to deal with this. Okay? And address it. I'm going to deal with it through, you know, good education, through uh, advice, through graded exercise, whatever. Whatever you're going to do. The risk, I suppose, here is that the funder or the payer or whoever it is that's deciding whether this person deserves compensation will look at this and say, oh, so they're, they're weak-willed, or they're thin-skinned, or they're misinformed. Maybe they don't deserve compensation. In my experience, that has yet to happen, but I will say that I've always approached it with very cautiously. Um, I don't see it. Those of us here in Ontario who work with, say, motor vehicle accidents, we have a, a pre approved framework here for, for people who uh, have been in an MBA and immediately get access to a certain amount of rehab funding. Um, I've yet to see a high score on a PCS be any indication for taking someone out of that framework. But it's just, it's, it's one of those, it's one of my assessment pieces that it's not problematic necessarily. I'm going to address it. Here's how I'm going to address it. For these, for the pathology, though, on the other hand, the psychopathology, again, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be scared of it. I think, you know, if you administer a screening tool, so, well, it's, you know, based on the published evidence, you know, I've administered this tool, um, it's, uh, they're scoring sort of super threshold for depression, major depressive disorder. If you, insurance provider, are really serious about helping this person get better, I would suggest you consider paying for something else. I don't think we need to be scared of it. But, uh, certainly, it's a consideration. There's no question about that. Obviously, none of what we don't want to do is stigmatize the patient. That's probably the biggest risk. Steve, you probably do this. Have you run into that problem at all? 
as far as stigmatizing the patient. Mm -hmm. um, not directly. It's like yeah. you, when you're dealing with motor vehicle injury cases and they're trying to prove uh, one side saying they're malingering and faking right. it, and you kind of get into very selective things that you choose to chart because right. somebody may take it and run with it. When you have people that sure. are already being surveillance, people are watching them shop, it does become quite sensitive. Yes. More so than just keeping right what you're thinking down on the paper, though. So. Yes, yes, no, indeed. Absolutely true. So the comment there was that, um, you know, for those who are perhaps currently involved in especially a, a highly punitive medical legal uh, pursuit, for lack of a better word, case, um, and you know, uh, this is where your clinical judgment comes into play, right? If you decide what it is you're going to collect, what it is you're going to screen, um, I'm certainly not going to make any sort of overarching statement here about what you should or shouldn't do. But it's, uh, yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. Certainly something I keep in mind, no question about it. Um, I just will say to you that I usually let my patients read my notes before I send them back to a, a funder or a doctor. Um, it's just a habit, again, I've gotten into. I'm not saying you need to do that or don't do that. Um, I, again, I approach things very objectively in that case. I say, here's the results of my assessments. PCS score this, whatever, FAB score this, this score this, this score that. And after each one, I put an interpretation, a couple sentences of interpretation. This suggests high levels of this. This suggests normal levels of this, whatever. From time to time, a patient will say, what did you mean by, what do you mean by catastrophizing? I'll say, well, based on the result, based on how you score the scale, you know, if I sum it all up, it indicates that uh, chance, I said really what it indicates to me is that you've had pain for a long time. It's, it's really affecting you both physically and I think emotionally by this point. And we're going to create a treatment plan that's going to address both of those things. So far I haven't had any issue with problem with 